Okay, my nice year 13s. We are now going to um, look at your answers that you did, majority of them based on the scientific report. You should have completed out that worksheet so that you understand each section. But also make sure you read the section on the classroom notebook on Teams because that outlines it further as well. So let's have a look at your first question. In this first question, you can see in the STEM you have got when the book was uh, published, what the name of the book was, who the person who wrote it, um, who published it and where it was published. So it is really important that you can write a reference, either for a reference sheet or a bibliography. Um, as well, knowing this, this will help you when you go off to university, but it's usually a two marker. It has come up occasionally in the exams, so it's important that you can write this. Again, I like to say that all of the answer is in the STEM, so that means it's quite easy marks. You just need to know the format. Now, to get your two marks, you need to have an accurate reference. So it has to have all the essential elements in an acceptable format. So here we have Duck, the surname, the initial, the year, the name of the book. You can either do it right at slanted or underline it, um, where it was and the name of the publisher. So it's really important that you can write it in that one, that format. Um, for one mark, the reference that needs to contain at least the surname, the date and the title in some uh, kind of format. So maybe it's a little bit muddled so you can still qualify for one mark there, but it has to have those elements in it. But think of the format, surname, initial, year, name of the book, where it was published and the publisher. Important to, to get that format zero marks for a reference that does not meet the descriptor for the one mark. So you might have the date and the name of the book will not get marks. You need to have at least the surname and the name of the book. Now, moving on to our second question. Again, it's practicing um, writing um, a reference for a reference sheet or a bibliography. It's about pulling the information out of the stem. Again, all the information is in the STEM, so really the marks are sitting in front of you. To get the two marks, it needs to be an accurate reference with all the essential elements in the acceptable format. And here it would be surname, initials, year, name of the book. You can write it slanted so it looks like italics, italic, italic. Right. Or you can underline it. Both are acceptable where it was published and the name of the publisher. Again, for that one mark, it has to contain at least the surname, the date and the title of the reference. And it is perhaps somewhat muddled or not in the right format, but zero marks. Um, if you don't have at least those three elements, you're going to get no marks at all. Again, the answer is in the STEM. Just remember the format. And this has been a question that's come up several times in the exams. So moving on to our third question. Here we're looking at a summary table. Now remember this is a summary table. That means we've done some form of calculations that has allowed us to summarize um, the data from the raw data table. And here we've got the medium and the range. Question is with reference to the data in the table above, outline what the findings for this investigation seem to show about the effectiveness of treatment. So two marks. So it has to be linked to the effectiveness of treatment because that's what it's asking. And what is the data? telling us. Now, you do not need to bring in both the median and the range. According to the mark scheme, you get one mark for a brief finding and a further mark for appropriate elaboration, or you can give two brief findings. So remember, brief findings, it's brief, not going into a lot of detail for both of them then. But I personally would go for just one of them, and then I can make a nice solid point 
and an explain. So I've give, I'm going to give you two using both of them. On average, the treatment group shows greater improvement after the treatment than the non-treatment group. Now, it has to be linked to the stem. It's not just saying the medium shows this in the range. It shows that the treatment group showed greater improvement because remember, it's talking about the effectiveness. So we're using the word greater improvement. The average improvement scores for the uh, non-treatment group was very low, uh, a medium of 2.7, suggesting that the treatment gains medium of 10.9 for the treatment group was not simply a result of a passage of time. So that means by passage of time, it doesn't just improve as time went past because we saw in the, the non-treatment group or the no treatment group that um, they didn't get or show a large amount of improvement. So you could have done it that way, you made a nice clear point, and it's important to link to the data. I'm now focusing on the range for another one. There was some variation in both groups, because that's where it's showing, because remember the range is to do with the spread of the data. The bigger the, uh, the range, the more spread, so the more variance, right? The more differences within it. So just a little bit of recap on that. So there was some variance in both groups as shown by the ranges, but it was wider in the treatment group of 2.1. So that means there were more people that showed differences in how much the treatment actually helped them. And um, the low range of 0 0.8 in the no treatment group suggests that most people in the group had similar low improvement scores. So there was less variance. So what this is kind of saying, it's saying the treatment group did help, but actually it helped people at different levels. Not everybody was helped to the same level. I've uh, looked at that one and both aspects, right? So moving on to our next question, what is the likelihood of the psychologist having made a type one error in the study, explain your answer. So it's asking what is the likelihood, you've got to give us that percentage. What is the likelihood? Then explain it. Now a type one is when the um, level of significance has been set too lenient. Now you might think, well, we don't know what it's said, but that's where you work at the standard one because the level of significance is set at five, that could still be too lenient. Remember, I told you we go lower in the level of significance if um, the um, phenomenon doesn't occur very often, so it's very rare, or it's within a situation that can cause harm like drug testing. We drop it down to perhaps that 1%. So one mark for correctly identifying the likelihood and another mark for elaboration. Right, or if your answer is slightly muddled, you can only qualify for one mark. So the likelihood of making a type one error is 5%. Use the level of significance, because remember that still might be too lenient. Now we need to explain this. This area occurs when a researcher claims to accept the alternative hypothesis, but this should not be. Due to the 5% level, there will always be a one in 20 chance or less that the results are due to chance, rather than the influence of the independent variable. So here we've explained it, okay? Maybe there's a little bit more than what you needed, but it clearly explains. So a type one is too lenient, so even 5% can be too lenient. Now we're moving on to our next um, question. And here you're asked to write a, a brief consent form and it's worth five marks. So I always say, get the space in your exam paper and actually write it like a form. Now, things that we're looking for, you are most likely, and they're not expecting all of this because it's only for four, uh, five marks, but a, a nice selection of this. You need to include um, what the treatment's about, uh, that there's going to be two conditions, a treatment and a non-treatment group, um, that they are going to have interviews. So really you're going to explain what the study is about, what they're going to do, what they're going to do with the results. So those three areas, plus you're going to link in some ethical issues um, 
asking for consent, uh, the right to withdraw. If you go into classrooms notebook, I've actually given in the research methods, if it says how to write a da 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 da, have a look there. I've given a breakdown as well on what makes a consent form. Now we have wrote a consent form last year. So again, good practice on this one. So look at yours. Have you included um, what the study is about, um, what they're going to do, what they're going to do with the results, the, some of the ethical issues, and also a thank you. So those are your kind of your five key areas. If you haven't got those five key areas, remember you don't need all the ethical issues and it all has to be linked to the study itself. If you haven't got those five areas, then you're going to be deducting marks. Now our last one is a 10 marker. Now a 10 marker, you, 10, 12 markers usually occur in paper two. I haven't seen them in any of the other papers because really this is kind of half the marks in the other modules, but you never know, something could come up that is pure application. In this one, it's asking you to write an appropriate method section, which includes reasonable detail of design, participants, materials, and procedures. Make sure that there's enough detail to allow another researcher to carry out this study in the future. So they're talking about replication here. Hint number one, exam hint number one. If they give you the categories, just stick to those categories. Don't be bringing in other things. Stick to those four categories because I kind of, they're saying this is a specification that we're looking for. This is what we're looking for. We need to bring in these four areas. So you want to do that. Also, they're asking you to write the method section. So they're asking you to write a section of the report so make sure you kind of write it like as if it was in the report itself. So for example, you're going to have your subheadings, design, write your paragraph on design, uh, new heading, participants, write your paragraph on uh, participants, then a new paragraph with a new heading, put the heading on its own line, then write its paragraph below. So this is what we are looking at for this one. So to walk you through it, Design. Can you see how um, this is what they would like to see in the exam? Design. A repeated measures design is to be used to allow for the participants results before treatment to be compared to the results after the new therapy treatment. This will allow for a clear comparison before and after treatment to be made to eliminate individual differences if a non-related method was to be used. So you're stating your design, why you're using your design and why you wouldn't use your design. So that if the person was replicating it, they can understand your thought processes so that they too can take that on board. Participants, new heading on a new line, let's do our paragraph. The target sample, so identify who's your target sample, is to be made up of both males and females. Remember, you will get this from the STEM. It's doing a comparison, a difference between men, males and females. So your target population is going to be males and females who have an eating disorder as it will allow for a clear comparison be, to made between the sexes and whether females will show a greater, oh, we're jumping on ahead here, will show a greater um, improvement compared to males. Okay, so we've justified who our target sample is and why, how are we going to get it? A volunteer sampling method to be used as posters can be put up in the clinics asking for volunteers who suffer from eating disorders. We can't do opportunity sampling. We've got to, because it's a socially sensitive subject, uh, there's a lot of ethical issues surrounding um, doing investigations in this area. So we need our participants to volunteer. So in our participants, we've got new uh, nice chunky system. We're saying who our target population is and why, and we're stating how we are going to get our sample and what we're going to do. Now we're moving on to the third section and that was material. Okay, give yourself a heading, then your paragraph. Consent forms to ensure that the participants are fully aware of what the research is about and can give fully informed consent. Questionnaires for before and after the treatment. There we go. We've got the information that we need. 
Because remember, we're not giving them the treatment. We're not the counselors. They're going in for this treatment. Procedures, participants to complete the consent form, which will inform them of the purpose of the research, their role, and how the research will be used. Participants, just jumping on ahead, sorry, to complete a questionnaire before and after the treatment. Okay, so you're giving an outline of what's going to happen. So they're going to do a questionnaire before and a questionnaire after treatment. So here we've got our four sections. This, I know it's 10 marks and you're thinking in the comparison to a 10 mark essay, but actually they've given you the four areas that you need to focus on. You don't need to focus on any other areas. If they didn't, then you would have to come up with the different areas, but they're expecting you to write it like a report. And actually, if you follow that format, it makes it much easier. Now, pause the video now and have a look to what you've wrote. Where do you think you fall? Are you up on the top band, uh, nine to 10 marks, effective method section that demonstrates sound knowledge and understanding of the investigation design? The design decisions, it's not looking just at the design, they're looking at all four paragraphs and appropriate. And the description provides an accurate detail of the design participants, materials, procedures of the studies. They're only looking for those areas, design participants, materials and procedure. They're not looking for others, so don't bring any others in. Effective and appropriate report style. They're not looking at it as one big paragraph. They want you to do it in the subsections. So take your time, remember, work through the video, uh, pause as you go along, use your different color pens, to annotate, to add on. And remember, take time to reflect. What have I done well? And jot it down. What do I need to do to improve? It's identifying those skills. Is it not interpreting the question? Is it only answering half the question, not meeting the mark allocation, not applying it? Is it knowing what um, assessment objectives the question is all about? So it's really important to take that time. Right, my lovelies, work well and take care.